What is up everybody, sysadmin Sean here, and today we're going to do a really quick glance over for Proxmox Backup Server, so stay tuned. So this is Proxmox Backup Server. Uh, it's a pretty cool little product that you can add into your Proxmox environment. It's not required to take backups, but it does give you a lot of extra benefit with your backups, should you choose to use it. Really easy to deploy. I'm not even gonna go through that part because it's just like deploying a Proxmox host. You get the pop-up, you put in the network info, you put in a username and password, and then it says, yeah, here's your server on this network. Connect in, log in, and start configuring. Now, the reason I'm not gonna show a lot about this system today is because I only have one Proxmox host now. So a lot of the use case for a Proxmox backup server is not, not beneficial to me. Uh, but I will show you kind of how to deploy it, a way to deploy it, and then talk about ways you should actually deploy it. So as you can see, I've got a Proxmox VM. A lot of people choose to do a physical uh, server that is separate from your Proxmox cluster. I think that's justifiable. Or you could use a separate cluster. You could use, you could run it in a VM as long as your backups are somewhere else. And you also back up the configuration of this device somewhere else. You just don't really want to do what I'm doing here, which is backing up everything directly to storage on the host that has the VM. So as you can see, our Proxmox server has two hard drives. They live on this host. So the backups that I could take inside the host are still being taken inside the host. So I'm not getting the benefit that Proxmox backups ever give. So once you get your storage set up and all of that, you have to come over to Proxmox, make sure that it shows up in here. As you can see, we've got it here. Then make sure that this becomes a data store, which we have here. So backups for data store. Here's our summary showing what's on here, what we've been using it for, how the data transpires and things like that. So when you're, when you're done with your configuration about your data stores and all that, you need to go up to show connection information. This information is what's going to be needed to add this as a storage device on your Proxmox host. So if we go back to our Proxmox host, we go up to data center and we go to storage, you will see that we have a Proxmox backup server data store essentially added. And you do that by clicking add, Proxmox backup server, and then filling out the info that you get from this side. And the really important one is this fingerprint. This That's something that um, is kind of unique um, for this. It's just an, like a, a SHA fingerprint, but rarely have I had to actually implement them in. Usually you log in and it pops up, do you trust this key? You hit yes and you go about your day. This just sort of puts the key in so you say you trust it ahead of time. And then once that's done, you go over to your backup job. You configure it with whatever VMs you want to back up. I'm doing exclude because I just don't want the Proxmox server. I want everything else but that, so it's easy to just check that. I tell it which storage to go to. It knows to go to the PBS server. And you set your, your retention. You can set this on the, um, the Proxmox server as well, or the backup server as well. And uh, then you just take your backups. And then once your backups are done, you can go back over here. You can, you can of course, look at your backups on your Proxmox host. You don't have to come over here, but you can look at them over here and kind of view stuff. I did take a single backup of it. Um, and you can drill into, you know, the different backups you have and things like that. You can also go into, yeah, you can also go in and browse specific files. So if you wanted to do a file level restore, you can do that from here. Um, the only thing I don't like about file level restores in Proxmox Backup Server is that it goes to a, um, you have to download it locally and then put it back into the server or, you know, pull out a copy and store it somewhere for forensic or whatever, things like that. Uh, but it doesn't do like Veeam in that, you know, you can completely replace a file onto the guest systems, which I really like. And obviously you can also do pruning, job syncing. So if you have a remote location to do a sync to, uh, that's pretty awesome. Uh, that's a real big benefit to Proxmox Backup Server is that. And then, of course, you want to do verification jobs that you need to schedule to make sure your backups are running, things of that nature. But that's pretty much it. Like I said, there's not a lot going on here that I can show because I don't have the configuration available. I would recommend you obviously have some sort of isolated backup system or, you know, other cluster dedicated to just backup resources and then storage devices and object storage, tape backups, which are available on Proxmox Backup Server, something to do, you know, your 321 type backups to make sure that all your data is connected. Um, so real, real quick, I mentioned it in the community tab, but I wanna mention it here. We are going to keep working on some new stuff 
uh, and I'm able to turn on monetization now, at least the first level, so I can add super thanks and I can add memberships. I'm gonna start a very low level single tier membership and I'm gonna add one new piece of content just for those members. It's gonna be a podcast, I'm thinking. That's what we're gonna try first and see how it goes, see if people like it, and if so, uh, we'll keep doing that. If not, I'll think of something else. Uh, but it'll be low cost. It's just for folks that feel like they wanna give a little something else to the channel, they can get something out of that. Otherwise, everything else is gonna stay the same content-wise. Uh, and like I said, uh, the reason that I only have one Proxmox host now is that we're gonna be trying a new product called Verge. And I'm gonna show how to set that up and what it looks like and talk about the vendor and talk about how they build their product and what their, their kind of goals are and things like that for folks that are also still looking for VMware replacements. Um, I don't have any information on update for that for our environment, so I'm sorry about that, no updates for right now. And then of course, we're just gonna keep going with more more guides, more tutorials. I wanna do more with Ansible. I wanna do more with HPC to show everybody how that kind of works. Um, and then again, your suggestions. Let me know what you wanna see. Uh, if there's anything in particular you want me to discuss or anything that I've discussed that you'd like a deeper dive on, let me know. And um, you know, just put all that down in the comments and we'll get to it when we get to it. Thanks, and we'll see you in the next one.